Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs. Welcome and welcome back. I'm here today with another one of my quick projects. And today we're going to make this, which one do I show you? Da, da, da. I'll show you this one. We're going to make this double envelope with a side tuck. Ooh, I need to put something at the end of my ribbon there to hold that one. Don't worry, we're not making the ribbon one today. So that's how it looks. Yeah, it looks like a double envelope. If you turn it over to the back, you will see we've got a little thumb notch cut out. And in there, we have, turn it right way, a tag. If we unwrap this, you will see we have another couple of tags in there. I won't be making the tags today. I mean, you can put anything you want in it. We're going to do the envelope. Open that up again. And we've got two more little tags. I'll just back them onto some card. That's some more of the design paper from this collection. So, here we go. Now, you can make these. I've made mine from 12 by 12 papers. I also did do a little prototype from A4. I'll bring it in and show you. I just did it from some, from some craft paper. So, you can make them from A4. You get this cute little one. So, if you want to make these for your vintage or grungy journals, you change it up by changing up the paper that you use. I just wanted to make some bright colourful ones for Happy Mails today. So that's that. Oh, I also made one that weren't so bright and colourful for my daughter. It's uh, <laughs> got a cat on. And again, I've used a different closure. I'll take the ribbon out to show you what I've done. I just reinforced that with a bit of card and I use my slot punch. Yeah, if you've got one of these slot punches, I love mine. I just punched it a couple of times along, so then you get a longer slot to fit wider ribbon in. Got a tag in the back there, the same. So yeah, I shall, oh yeah, that one I used a button string closure. I've not put anything in this yet. So what I will say, if you want to do a button string closure on yours, do your buttons before you glue the envelope together, yeah? So that you can get your tools whatever you're going to use to do it in this one i will be doing this closure today this one is closed with velcro dots my the ones i love the scotch low profile ones but that button's clear the fluffy one's not and i just popped a little ribbon on that i made with my envelope punch board there yeah cute so we're just going to do the envelope today and the velcro closure Right, I've chosen a piece of paper to make it from. It's another one from that same collection. I think it's a Grace Grace Taylor. I don't know the name of it. I've took the cover sheet off. So, if you're doing it with 12 by 12, get your piece of paper. You want it on your mat in the direction the pattern is going to go. Because we're going to, can you see? Yeah. If you want the pattern to run sideways, you could turn it round. That might look good with this washi paper, actually. But no, I want it that way, just to be boring. So we're starting. Turn your paper over and you want to fold it lengthways. Get it lined up as good as you can, because this will make your envelope look better. And then give it a good burnish. These kind of projects, the better you burnish your creases the crisper you get them the better they work out right now this is when i'm gonna turn my paper upside down just to confuse you well i <laughs> i want upside down showing because when we've done all our folding it's the other side we're going to see so it's upside down with that crease at the opening there if you want your tag on that side if you want the tag on the other Put it the other way, but if you're using directional paper, beware, like, had I done that with this birdies, my birdies would be upside down. So that is why my opening is on the right. With directional paper, it will end up on the right. Anyway, shut waffle and crack on. We're now going to fold this up. Just short. That's about half an inch. You don't have to measure it. The exact measurement really doesn't matter. But half an inch short. Then take that bit and fold that down. About I've done it about half an inch front bottom this time. Again, this doesn't matter. Unless you're using a button string closure, make sure there's enough room to fit your button in. And crease that, yeah? So if I bring my other one in, we have now done the bottom flap. 
this one. Right, we will have to cut some of this paper off and it's going to be that bit. So what I do at this point is put a cross on there so that when I unfold it, I know exactly what I'm going to be cutting off. Yeah. Right, another fold, we're going to fold down to make the top flap. So you decide where you want it. You could put it higher up. In fact, shall I do mine a bit higher? Yeah. I'm going to do it like that today so that gaps are evenish. Today, I did others today. I mean, this time. Right, so there we have that. I've not put a definite crease in there just yet because I want to do something with this corner. I don't like how that looks. You will get that. You always get that when you crease papers, when you're folding them in on themselves. Right, if you're going to do a button string closure, now is the time to measure, punch your holes and put them in. I'm not, so we're not. I'm going to undo this and I'm going to do some cutting. So this one on the bottom with the cross, I want to cut that piece off. I also want to cut about half an inch of that piece off. So I'm going to grab my centering ruler, which is what I like to use. Any ruler will do. This just does two jobs for me. If you line it up, or if you've got a grid of mat, you can line it up. That might help you measure it. So, about there, I think. Yeah. And I'm going to line that line of my ruler up with the crease. Well, I would do if I could see it crease. If I weren't filming, I'd get my head right over the top now and I'd be able to see it, but you won't be able to see <laughs> so hey ho don't do that i'm gonna get my big chompy scissors yes i am going to cut a line with scissors and it's gonna go well Woohoo! i told you there's no measuring there's no scoring and i haven't even used my trimmer don't put your scissors down you've only done half a job woman and then cut down there to where you cut before. There we go. Then fold it back over, turn it back upside down. Which <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So we've got our opening to the right, and we've got the bit we cut off missing from the bottom on the back. Yeah, silly woman. Right. So I'm going to fold that back up. Make sure it's all lined up nicely. There we go. Then this bit here, I want to glue it. Yeah, I just had to check that one lined up well, and it is. So I'm going to open it up again, and I'm going to glue that flap to that flap. Yeah, but before, oh, before I do glue in, let's put some thumb notches in. Pop one there. I knew there was a step I nearly missed out with all my waffling. Thumb notch there. That's your inside envelope flap, and one there, that is for your back, yeah? So everything we're doing, basically, we're doing to this one side of paper. That, that is that, and that is that, yeah? So now we're going to glue those two flaps together. So for this, I like to use my art glitter, and this is why I've not put a definite crease in here because it might change slightly. Come on, glue, you want to come out? Let's give you a big squeeze over there, that's it. And I'm going all the way around the edge. This will make sure you get this flap glued together with no wrinkles. I'm also gonna put a little bit of my dry adhesive in the middle, just to keep it nice and smooth. You use whatever adhesive you're happy with. Then I'm gonna fold this over I'm going to get these corners lined up nicely. There we go. Right. You, you don't have to use art glitter. Again, I think those of us who use this on camera say it all the time because it dries so quick, it's perfect for using on camera. Then I'm going to round those corners. I'm using my quarter inch We Are Memory Keepers one. Mine looks different because I broke it. In case you've not seen me before and not heard me moan about that, which I often do, perhaps once a week. And round those. Those are your flaps. So I'm just going to give that one another, another 
press down while that's just having a little bit of time to glue down I'm going to come in and just redo all my creases there we go right turn it upside down again so you've got flap there thumb notches on the back and let's do that that's one and let's do this now can you see why I said don't do that crease definitely make sure it's all lined up nicely and then come in and do your crease you might get a little bit of wrinkling on the inside that does not bother me in the slightest it's the outside I'm interested in but I'll show you what I mean oh it's just a tiny little bit here I can live with that don't know about you so now it's time to do some more gluing so first bit I'm going to glue is this bit here yeah that's the side of your bottom flap and I'm doing that first because I can get at it so I'm just going to put a line of glue down there or again whatever adhesive you want to use so that's that one done and then we're going to glue this to there to make our second pocket so we want to do it from there from that crease to that crease on both sides do you know, I think this is the wrinkliest one I've made because I'm making it on camera. But it still works fine. Address your wrinkles, they won't bother you then. <laughs> that works on your face too. <laughs> just for me. Right, I'm just going to fold that out because it's just easier to press that down. Right, now while that glue is gluing, I'm going to get my glue dots out. No, I'm not. I'm going to get my Velcro dots out. Show you how to apply those. If you're using a different method to close it, you don't need to know this. If you've never seen these before, you might be interested. So I'm going to get one of my furry ones, which are white. These are Scotch brand, by the way. I've never found these really low profile ones by any other brand. And I'm talking, they're about a quarter as thin as others that I've used. So we've put a furry one on each flap. Then I'm gonna get, I call them furry and hooky. That's just me. I don't know whether they have a proper name. Then I'm gonna put the two hooky ones on the back of the furry ones. Just like that. Now I've decided that glue has probably dried enough for me to come in and put my flaps down so the bottom one first and then the back of the hooky one will glue for you don't take it off straight away just give it a little bit of time to set up and then that one so there we have our envelope closed yeah turn it over we've got our thumb notch yeah so if you see here any bagginess you've got ends up being there if you look at this one that one's exactly the same but when you've filled it with everything, it's not an issue. It really actually just makes it easier to put a tag in that back side tuck. Back side tuck? That's some terminology for you, isn't it? Right, now I dare lift my Velcro. So we've got that. We've got that. You see a bit of the white paper there, but that's the only bit of white paper you really see. That and that. And there we have our double envelope with side tuck so I hope you give that a go uh, I will be showing you how to do other closures in other projects I have showed you how to do all of these closures in other projects I will try and link those below uh, if I think of it before this gets uploaded so I hope you enjoyed that uh, yeah give it a whirl give it a whirl and post one to me I can be your happy mail recipient <laughs> Uh, you don't have to, no. Make it for anybody you like. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.